Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. And because she was such a big hit the first time, Alice is back, but this time we're here in Sydney. Last time she came down to Canberra. But again, I'm here at the Matrix Technical Center in Sydney, Australia, and we're gonna do some great hair today. So going on from what we did last time, Alice has sent me a um, picture and she wants to be really short and really blonde. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I thought I'd also mention um, some of the supporting products we'll be using um, post color. Um, Sam is still here with me in Sydney, so she'll be doing the color a little bit later on. When we lighten hair, <clears throat> I think it's fair to say we push boundaries and having fundamentally a, a strong technical understanding of how to lighten hair is obviously very important. However, there is a change in the physical composition of the hair, which is unavoidable. We do use uh, products to obviously um, nurture the lightening process and the condition of the hair during that lightening process. But the Unbreak My Blonde range is actually going to be um, helping us today. And I've also um, included this professional only product, which is called Bleach Finder. What that allows us to do is to ensure that we rinse it properly and we'll speak more about that later. But we're going to cut Alice's hair first because you can see she's got a little bit of regrowth from last time. Quite she hasn't had her hair done since last time. A lot of that hair is gonna come off. We're actually going really short, so. Without further ado, we are going to prep her hair for the haircut, cut it, and then once again, Sam will be here, and she's gonna have a chat to you about what she's doing with the color. Ready to get started? Yes, very excited. What do we do after we say that? Do you remember? <laughs> Thumbs up. Last time I did Alice's hair, I had a couple of people say, is that really a pixie? And for me, pixies were generally shorter on the sides and only so slightly on top. These days, I think people refer to pixie as any feminine style short haircut. Um, so today I'm actually gonna show you what I would say is a pixie for me. It's gonna be, I would say significantly different to the last one we did but not dramatic, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna start by putting in my horizontal guideline all the way around. Then everything on the top comes to that point, and then I'll remove the length underneath. So. so horizontal, just under 90 degrees, so it is slightly graduated. Making sure that we're cutting horizontal, I'm not following the head around because otherwise that will uh, end in um, it being, uh, what would you say, like rounded, so it'll go upwards. We actually want it to come down this way. Then some, some of you guys said that you felt like it wasn't a real pixie, so I'm going to do what I've always had people label as a pixie cut, and it's the one that I'm probably known for doing. And so I guess I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. And so I know sometimes I don't do step by step, but this is literally gonna be almost like a step by step. So I don't normally make my videos that way. So spinning Alice around a little bit more, you can see the back here. So what I'm doing is if I stand here, I'm gonna round it back. So what I actually need to do is I actually need to stand here and then we need this to be horizontal. So this hair has to come out to the comb. We don't want to round it around this way. And if you have your guideline cut first, then we want to bring all the hair underneath to that point. If it doesn't reach, that's fine. But what you'll see start to happen is we create that really beautiful point into the back. And you should be able to see that already now. So you can see how that's starting to come around into the back like that. And then once we've done this on both sides, we'll cut that hair underneath off. So again, let's take a section about a quarter of an inch or a centimetre, half an inch or a centimetre wide, just below 90 degrees, because if we do 90 degrees, it'll go square. And we do want it to be a little bit graduated, but we don't want it to be too wedged. And then you can see that I picked the hair from underneath up to that point. And now cut that off. Continuing through, not to so far, darling, thank you. Continuing through with my quarter, uh, half an inch or one centimetre guide. You can see that I'm not doing this, I'm bringing it out. I 
We're lifting everything up to that point. And you can see again, I'm bringing it around. Making sure everything under the, underneath, if it reaches my guideline, it's cut. Again, when we comb this, you start to see that starting to round down in the back and we're gonna end up with this point here. Head forward for me, darling, thank you. So just like when I'm doing long hair and I'm using horizontal lines, the whole idea first is to make sure that we get a guideline coming into the back. Obviously it's not long enough here, but if it was, this would actually be down like this. And now all I'm gonna do is gently dry this off and then we're gonna cut the underneath. So guidelines in and now I'm gonna use the clipper. So the most important thing is that we don't cut that guideline and we maintain that graduated shape um, because I don't want to flat. For me, um, uh, uh, square haircuts on ladies can just look really strong and a bit hard, a bit masculine almost. And, and look, that's fine if that's what you're going for, but... Not what I'm going for. Not what Alice is going for. So, now we're gonna go in and remove all this hair underneath that we don't need, making sure we don't cut into this guideline. Again, you can see this guideline coming down here. Want to make sure that we don't take that off. Because I want to keep this fullness and length in the back. Might just sit down. For... Actually, because we've got some regrowth, you're actually going to be able to see this shape form really good. You can see it's coming here, all the way down and into the back. And we don't want to take that point out either. And as I said, I want to make sure that I keep all this length in the back. And again, see this shape coming down here. We want to make sure that we don't take that off. So I'm making sure that when my comb goes in, I'm actually turning it out so that we keep all that length on top. You can really start to see that shape starting to form.
I'm just going to give it another quick, little quick blast and then we're going to refine this. Once this is all refined, then we'll go on to the top. But I won't start cutting the top until I'm 150% happy with the underneath. I, I like to finish one part before I move on. So, refining time, scissor over comb. As I've mentioned, the clipper is not a finishing tool. I use it for bulk hair removal. And I'm doing scissor over comb to really refine the shape in the sides here. and making sure that we're working super accurate, taking our time because we don't want to go and undo all the hard work that we've just done by clipping, you know, creating this beautiful shape and then we go and rush and then all of a sudden, you know, we undo all our hard work and that wouldn't be cool. Again, clipper over comb for me is, it's, a, it's actually a really effective way to create shape, but it's not how we finish here. We have to go back, finish with a scissor over comb. Now we can add some texture to this if we want. However, we're going to be lightening the hair. So that's going to affect the texture of the hair. So we'll wait and do texture later. What I am gonna do is just remove some of this um, shape here because as I've previously spoken about, I do horizontal lines to build shape and then I use vertical to try and just soften a little bit. But if I were to want to make quite sort of graduated shapes that are really tight, it's almost impossible to do uh, vertical. Well, I guess if you've got micro skinny fingers, you probably can, but I don't, I've got big long fingers and it's very hard for me to, um, well, I guess I can't go any sort of tighter than the width of my hand will allow. So by doing horizontal versus having to get my hand in there, it makes it a lot easier for me to get uh, like those acute angles and that way we can end up cutting this beautiful shape. So you can imagine for me to get my fingers in here like this and do this gradu uh, graduation vertically all the way around, it's very, very hard. But by doing it horizontally, it allows me to um, get in there a lot easier. And then all I need to do is, knowing that horizontal lines create more weight, then we just go back and we can soften it either with texture or we can soften it vertically. Just pop your head forward for me. It's beautiful. And there's the scar there. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on to the top. So the hair that is in front of the ear here, just resist cutting that for now if you need to, to section it forward so you don't get confused. And again, we're working into that primary design line that I cut when I did the underneath. And we bring everything to that point until we run out of hair. And it's a stationary guideline. So my fingers are literally sitting on the top, just like they were when I did my original horizontal section to begin the underneath of this haircut. Make sure you don't cut that length in the front. Push it forward if you need to use a clip. Now I'm going to go around to the other side. It's starting to get a little bit dry, a little bit of water. Make sure you don't take too big a section. You want to make sure you can control the hair and you can see your guideline underneath because if you can't, you'll get lost. That'll affect the shape. Again, I'm stopping at the top of the ear there on top of my original guide, bringing everything into that point. Pull it all across. 
Make sure this guideline follows all the way through so we don't touch it. You can see my guideline under there. See how that all falls into the back. So with the side, what I do is, as I said, from here, I, you can see where it's disconnected. So I'm going to take a section and I'm going to use this corner as my guide and I'm going to over direct the hair to retain the length. Again, my finger is on my original guide so I'm not lifting out, but I'm making sure that I don't cut horizontal, I'm cutting diagonal forward. So all this length in the front is going to be retained. I'm going to lift the hair up using the top here as a guide because as I said I don't want to take any of that length out of the back. We're going to layer this retaining length towards the front. We keep it as dramatic as we can towards the front. seeing what I've got to work with after Adam's beautiful haircut but we are going to get started on colour. We're going to go through, do on scalp lightening today, clean out these ends and then we'll talk toner later on. So we've got our light master here and we're ready to go but a couple of things I wanted to run through with your on scalp lightening. It's super important even though we've got short hair we want it to be the best condition that we can keep it in. So we're going to just focus on the roots today and then We'll set our timer and then we're going to go through the ends just to clean it up with one of our other products. But really important not to overlap, but really important to take see-through sections and make sure you're working in really well. left this processing for about 25 minutes. Uh, it's getting nice and light. And now what I'm actually using is a beautiful ammonia free lightener, um, the Curl Lights Matrix range. And basically it's just a little bit gentler on the hair. It's also got beeswax in it. So it's gonna condition the hair a little bit. When, it, when we rinse that, we're gonna feel a little bit more softness from the hair. And we're just gonna go through all the pre-lightened ends just to refresh that because we're... We've 
poked our curl lights through on those ends. We're going to give it 15 minutes more and then we're going to rinse. Entra, hola. Oh, hi again, everyone. Looks pretty cool. No little part anymore, Missy. No. I'm going to do a little pirouette so we can see the back. Just spin around. We have a Whee! Chair, All the way. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful, Alice. So again, uh, Alice is rocking her short hair. Um, and for me, this is probably closer to what I'd say pixie. So for me, the elements in a pixie are has to be dramatically shorter on the sides, longer on the top, so you just don't want it flat and square. Um, generally one side shorter than the other, so you can see that here is shorter than the other side, and then you have the length either coming this way or the other way, and then don't wear it too flat. They say the higher the hair, the closer to God, so make sure you've got some volume in it. Awesome. Thanks for doing the colour again. You're welcome. Thanks for making it very well complimented, complimented with that beautiful it's good. You're welcome. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. You can follow Sam uh, on Instagram. Again, we'll put it up here. And Alice, you probably already do from the last video. Um, yeah, so thanks again for tuning in. And until next time from Sydney, Australia, it's bye. Thanks for having me.